Hello and welcome uh, to the second episode. Uh, of, it's it's no longer a podcast. Uh, it is now officially uh, a radio show. We've we've given up on the podcast idea. Uh, apparently, it's just it's a saturated market, and radio radio is where it's at anyway. Uh, but anyway, welcome to the second episode of Bit Obscene, the radio show. Uh, I'm Eric Darling. Uh, I do consulting things with SQL Server. And joining me today, again, keeps coming back, is Joe Obish, world, world-renowned SQL Server agent job expert extraordinaire. And uh, if, you had, if you hadn't guessed by that introduction, the, the topic of today's show is, uh, is SQL Server agent jobs and... Well, I guess SQL Server agent in general. So uh, gets, let's get started with that. Joe, take it away. You apparently have some thoughts on agent jobs, and I'd, I'd love to hear them. Well, the radio show, why I bother digging the SQL Saturday show in my closet? You know, you uh, uh, can't see people on the radio. My, my second thought is... We're flipping the script a little, Joe. I thought we were doing so well that we had our first sponsor. You know, I, I rearranged... I have to send uh, <laughs> everything. I mean, you seem to be telling me that that I might have misread your email, and Everlast is not sponsoring us. Is that how it is? Uh, they were technically anti-sponsoring us. They wanted you to not show their products in the background. Um, well, it's, it's uh, too late now. Yeah, you know, we're, we're it's screwed. Not, it's not a movie, I think. Yeah, here come the lawyers. Anyway, like you know, now our our viewers might be thinking, well. What do punching bags have to do with databases? And I think there's a bigger connection than you might. You know, for example, when you're in SSMS, you know, and you see the little like a database icon, mm-hmm. what's what's it shaped like? It has a cylinder, right? Mm-hmm. It's also shaped like a cylinder. It is, um, yeah. Until you punch it enough, then it yeah. gets a little and lumpy. Speaking of punching, I'm sure you've met many developers who basically treat the database as their own personal punching bag. Uh, right. you, you know, the very various metaphors would apply there. You know, punching bag, toilet. Uh, you know, there's lots of lots of things that lots lots of ma- maltreatment of databases right. by developers out there. And for the most part, databases can't even fight back. They uh, can't defend themselves. You know, they just, oh. they, they, they just have to sit there <laughs> and take whatever abuse is hurled at them. I it's think I think databases have their own way of. Uh, you know, sort of uh, protesting developers in various ways. Uh, errors. I and... think there's a marketing opportunity here for Microsoft. Yeah. You you uh, go to the cloud, you uh, get a free punching bag because you're you're. I mean, you're certainly going to need it. Well, when, right? you, go, when you, know? you move to the cloud, you are the punching bag. Look, all Microsoft I know Microsoft just is, continues you know... to hang you upside down and punch money out of you. When I'm looking at a database and I see like my like tenth parameter sniffing issue of the day, you mm. know, the, the punching bag really uh, comes in handy. <laughs> do, so, uh, do, do you get parameter sniffing from your agent jobs, Joe? Oh, you, okay. You want me to end the uh, comedy routine? No, I want. Um, I want you. To, I, I didn't know if you were looking for a segue or not. Or so agent jobs are, I guess, another example of how databases can be abused. It's also an example of how Microsoft abuses us. The other day I was looking into getting some, you know, like they have Asian jobs for Azure SQL database now. Just, it's, just it's, what it's, 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 it's like this separate thing you have to buy. You mm. get charged like $23 a month just to run Asian jobs. It's uh, 23 bucks. That, that seems cheap. It seems cheap, but yeah. you know it's got to be pure profit for them. Oh yeah, totally. I mean, agent, I agent is existing, like existing code. Nickel and dime to our, you know, run mm-hmm. an agent job. You know, uh, Microsoft is turning into Oracle, oh. in, in all sorts of fun new ways. You have oh, subscriptions boy. to everything. You want to plan oh, cash? Ten bucks a month. I thought we wanted to have like Microsoft guests on here one day. You're you're kind of you know, kind of sinking. I, uh, I'm, I'm, not entire, I'm not entirely sure who from Microsoft would be brave enough to join us. Brave and but, foolish. You know. I, I, I can think of one man who is uh, brave and foolish. You know? Yeah, yeah, me too. But you know, uh, I don't, I don't know if he, has, I don't know if he has a working headset. <laughs> it's, it's a big question. So I. 
I have somewhat of a narrow view when it comes to, you know, what problems people have with their database. Mm -hmm. and by that, I mean, I'm not a consultant. I, you know, I don't put my suit and tie on in the morning every day. As I haven't I do. seen that many production databases. Now, you, on the other hand, okay. have a very wide view of the outside world. You've seen many databases while you're mm -hmm. doing your, I don't know what's called, uh, Eric Darling Deep Dives. Is that what you call it? Uh, you know, I, I don't, I don't have an official name for anything. Oh, uh, you do better know, marketing. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, well, I, I, it's sort of, sort of an undefined relationship. It's whatever, yeah. whatever you need me to do with SQL server, we can, we can, we can sit, we can, we can work through it together, you know? So while you've been doing what people need, mm -hmm. how often have you informed them that they have Asian shop problems or difficulties or, you know? There's areas to improve uh, with that aspect. So, I mean, the majority of my work is, of course, SQL Server performance tuning. So if someone has an agent job that is uh, doing something particularly heinous from a performance perspective, then, you know, uh, tuning whatever is inside that agent job is, is certainly on the menu. Um, sometimes I'll help people set up certain agent jobs to do maintenance and stuff. Uh, if they if they need that sort of help, uh, a lot of the time, a lot of the times when 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 that is something that uh, that people require, that usually takes the form of uh, me fixing their index maintenance to stop doing stupid, useless rebuilds and reorgs, and just continue to update statistics. That's 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 probably the most common thing. That's the, aside from like you know performance tuning, whatever is encapsulated by the agent job. Yeah, what kind of things have you seen, Joe? And now you've said that, I'm wondering if my experience is a bit atypical. Mm. But, you know, maybe it'll be instructive anyway. So I think there's a trap that can be quite easily fallen into, mm. depending on how much you use agent jobs. Um, like it's natural to you know like say you, you have a bunch of tests you want to run okay I'll, I'll run these tests every hour these tasks every 15 minutes these tasks every five minutes mm. these every one minute mm. it's like, a lot of overlapping very, job schedules there Joe. yeah so like you know like it's a very natural thing to think you know like, you, like you, you're basically thinking in terms of like like how would a human do a chore, right? Like, oh, I do it every hour, every 15 minutes. Yeah. And as you pointed out, when you pick these, like, you know, human-friendly uh, frequencies, yeah. they all overlap. In, in, the, in the big, in, in the, in the grown-up world, we call them cadences, Joe. Cadence. Cadence. I don't think I've ever seen the word at cadence what, in what, what, At what cadence would you like this job to run? Um, anyway, if, if if you do the math, or if you you know like envision a you know, schedule, like every hour, you're gonna have every single Asian job kick off. Yeah. If if you follow the you know every five or fifteen or one hour. Or one mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, it's like I have definitely seen servers that have huge CPU spikes every fifteen minutes, mm -hmm. just because you know. Do you know how agent jobs are uh, scheduled? You just get that huge burst of work yep. every 15 minutes. Yeah. I mean, it's to the point where, you know, like it was definitely the server was noticeably slower during those times. Like, I, you know, like if you're in the application, you can notice that um, if I was doing query performance tuning, it's like, oh, this, this is taking longer than I thought. And I would look at the time. And, Oh well, it's you know three fifteen p.m. So yeah. of course it's taking longer. Yeah. All of I'll a sudden, wait a minute, SOS schedule yield shoot up, or you're blocked, or something. And yeah, and you know, like it's also if you're taking a holistic view of weight stats, mm. it can really trip you up there too. Like mm. oh well, you know, over this four hour time period, I got fifty percent CPU average, but a ton of SOS uh, weights. Mm -hmm. You know, like. Like, why do I have only 50% CPU, but a ton of processes are spending their time 
waiting on CV, mm-hmm. was it a scheduling problem? But, you know, like, and there's certainly inefficiencies in scheduling, but for the work that I was looking at, it just ended up being a lot of it was just Asian jobs. You know, mm-hmm. you had these big bursts, and then when you look at a bigger window, that'll throw everything off and make the wait stats analysis misleading. Well, yeah, you know, I think it's a, it's especially perilous because, uh, you know, uh, Microsoft does not give you any particularly uh, useful tooling uh, from the server level to show you uh, when exactly wait stats happened. You know, you can get some database level stuff out of query store, but you might not have query store enabled for every database. Not every database needs that level of monitoring. And, you know, you, you, there's, a, there's a real disservice there because what what may look like a real problematic work workload generally is really just a problematic workload on the hours. Right? Yeah. Um, I, I... Can you change the query store, like 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 roll up interval? I don't remember. Uh, what for wait stats? No, just just in general, because I mean by default it, it's a, you know things are summarized by the hour. Yeah, you can you can change the you can change the the interval I think to different different cadences, but uh that's that's something that I generally do just because you usually usually yeah, by the sure hours either. is okay enough. I would say it's okay enough um, unless you have this problem or, you know, many other problems mm. that we're not going to talk about today. <laughs> um, yeah, and, you know, like, maybe there's this this argument for, well, I do wonder if some people think, oh, well, like, I have to run this code every hour for uh, business purposes. Mm-hmm. You know the business demands that this is my requirements. I have to do it. Sure, like so maybe, maybe people choice. are expecting some data set to yeah. refresh every um, hour. Yeah, and like I think that needs to be decoupled from the actual scheduling. Um, mm-hmm. I'm a big fan of what I'll call fuzzy scheduling. Like, you need to run every hour. You know, like don't run it every hour. Mm-hmm. Like, run it every three thousand five hundred and ninety three seconds. I, you know, I would like, even I would even take a different approach than that. Uh, I think that if your job is if or rather if your agent job is focused on some sort of data refresh or data purging, you should run that much more frequently. Because if you if you if you if you think to yourself, it's sort of it's sort of like the for me it's sort of like log backups, right? Like people will set up log back log backups in some schedule that meets their RPO goals, right? They're like, so like, let's say the business is like, you can't lose more than 15 minutes of data. So you set up log backups every 15 minutes, but that's kind of a stupid approach because you should be aiming to beat whatever goals you're given so that you, like, so that it, like if anything ever happens, you can, you're safe, right? Like if, if you, if you don't want to lose 15 minutes of data, you should be taking log backups like every five minutes. Because that way you're protected if anything happens to one of those log backups. And this, the same same sort of vein, I would say that if you need to do an hourly data refresh, if you count on doing that refresh every hour and you that task starts taking longer and longer, you're going to start missing that goal. So you should do that more often because that way, if you do it more often, you're moving smaller chunks of data and you have a better chance at meeting that hourly goal. You no longer put all the strain at that 60-minute mark. I think the point you just made leads into what I was going to say, which is, you know, it's not like anyone cares when a process starts. They uh, right. care when it finishes. Right. So to even say, well, you know, like I- I'm thinking about, you know, okay, well, for whatever business reason, we uh, can't refresh or, or quicker than an hour. Or, mm-hmm. you know, that that's what the customer says they want. Maybe the data would, would be incomplete if they did more frequently or something like that. I don't mm-hmm. know. But, like, even then... Like starting at the hour on the hour exactly isn't meaningful because you have no idea how busy the server will be. You don't know if you'll be waiting for locks. You don't mm-hmm. know if you're thinking, "Will this hour fail?" Mm-hmm. Right? You know, last time we talked about the many, many ways your perfect code can still fail. Absolutely. Right. So, I think that it's important to be flexible in how you schedule your Asian jobs. If you, you know, have a problem like this where you have many Asian jobs. Mm-hmm. And there is a nozzle tax on, on your server CPU. Mm-hmm. And along the lines of what you're saying, changing the cadence 
could be helpful in uh, some cases. Mm -hmm. I think even so, like, you still don't want to schedule on those nice, even cadences mm -hmm. if you can help it, because mm -hmm. then you're going to get the overlap. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you had, if you got your your uh, four-core loan machine that's <laughs> it's, uh, chugging along, and you uh, kick off 50 Asian jobs at once, you're not doing anything useful other than right. generating waste debts. Um, or, or worse, just you're, you're, I mean, I mean, well, I mean, it's still a waste stat, but just, you know, kicking off 50 agent jobs on a four core server, you have a very, very strong chance of generating some thread pool weights, I think, or resource semaphore weights, depending on uh, what exactly those queries are up to. Yeah, I mean, you, you're not doing anything helpful or good or useful. Yeah, so I mean, you're, um, you're, 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 you're basically launching a denial of service attack on yourself. So I'm of the opinion that you know, scheduling Asian jobs every minute or five minutes or whatever, you just shouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. You know, like even just doing it like every 61 seconds mm -hmm. or 59 seconds mm -hmm. and changing it for, for job is, you know, that way you're not getting that overlap, you know, it'll mm -hmm. be offset. Yep. Um, the other thing I've done sometimes is just, you know, combining Asian jobs. So sure. like five things running every minute, you know, you could, you, you could use the, uh, you could have like multiple steps for job mm -hmm. or some other method, you know, things like that. Sure. Um, so I was able to get pretty far with those types of approach, both combining Asian jobs that had similar cadences mm -hmm. into one yeah, and then changing the cadences to not be mm -hmm. even minutes. Um, yeah. You play a lot of fizz buzz game with them. One, one annoying thing is, if you create, I don't know, if you create an Asian job with with a frequency of many seconds, I think mm -hmm. it's over a hundred. Mm -hmm. SMS throws an error if you try to open it. Hmm. No, I've never tried to do that. I, I, I guess some developer assumed that the number of seconds in a frequency would always be two digits. So if you uh... so if you, if you pick something like. 301 seconds, you know, five minutes plus one. Mm -hmm. And then you try to view the, the schedule. Yeah. And that's if there was an error. Yeah. Like, they, other they, than that, it still works. They, they were probably but expecting 15, 59 seconds as being like the. Yeah. The, yeah. Because, like you know, like, because why would someone pick 301 seconds as supposed to five minutes? Yeah. Right? It's just picked, well, Right. Why, why, wasn't, why, wasn't, why wasn't that developer defensive enough to, to say, I, I can convert? This number of seconds to a number of minutes and have to have a remainder. I mean, I'm a I'm a math idiot, and I know you can do that. I'm sure it was done like 20 years ago, and you know, what before math? No one cares. Um, so I've done tricks like that mm -hmm. to you know, you know, when looking at servers with many Asian jobs, and you have the CPU spikes. That's yep. one way of addressing it. Yep. But sometimes even that isn't enough. Yep. Um, for example, if you have many like uh, tenant databases, mm -hmm. you have one database per customer or whatever, and they all have the same Asian jobs, you know, like mm -hmm. if you if you use scheduling tricks, okay, I'm not going to do it every five minutes. I'm going to do it every five minutes plus one second. Where I'm going to combine things. If you have ten databases and they're all doing the same Asian job work then you're still multiplying that work mm. by 10 times. Mm. Um, yeah. That's uh, something I, I, I've run into as, as a problem that had to be solved. Yeah. Uh, one, 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 one of my least favorite things in the world is when I, was when I expand the agent job node and um, I'm greeted by a list of like a thousand GUIDs because someone has SSRS reports all you know named in there and ssrs reports aren't named anything helpful they're named job guids and then the other job names are all guids rather and when you start looking at how those are scheduled they're all very very tightly coupled and those those reports have a really nasty way of walking all over each other because like there's some job step that like locks some other table and then starts the running the job and the whole thing is a nightmare uh, so that's that's one of my least favorite things to see when I when I open up agent is like you know multiple agent jobs you know you you can at least figure out what's going on by the name to some degree but you see those guids man you're you know you're in trouble you know you're in a bad bad way 
necessarily the same thing as going to a restaurant to enter alcohol. Uh, well, I've never done that. So uh, actually, I did that once, and yeah, that right. that was really bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I didn't know. I was Welcome I was like paral- I was paralyzed. They were like, "What do you want to drink?" And I was like, "I, I, the al- the alcohol you don't have." <laughs> uh, last time I'd ever do that. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's it, it's good they got rid of sequel Saturdays because now that won't happen anymore. Yeah. Uh, well, I thought I thought the fellow that was running sequel Saturday Madison moved or something. Bridge, bridge. Uh, not yet. It, it, you know, it's, uh, anyway. Um, I, th- I thought he was moving to New York or something It's, it's like uh, all in the past, you know. It is all in the past. Your, your, your uh, traumatic experience, it's all in the well, past. Well, I, I blame that more on the, the, the people who planned that meal more than, mm-hmm. more than anything, because mm-hmm. there was a really good opportunity to go to a restaurant that had, like, a wine list, and everyone wanted to go to some place, like, 20 minutes outside of Madison that had like a soda, a, soda, a, soda, a soda list. Great barbecue. I'm sure, mm-hmm. but who could tell? Because you can't drink with it. You possibly enjoy a meal. So speaking of not enjoying things, yeah. uh, how, do you, how do you solve that SSRS problem? I have not yet had the pleasure of working with oh, SSRS. Well, I mean, that, that's a mix of things. You know, SSRS reports are typically written by absolute buffoons and just need some tender loving care to fix them up. And so you, if you can make all the reports fast enough, generally the scheduling problem is a little bit less, a little bit less woolly, uh, than, than, uh, than like, than like with agent jobs that actually do like meaningful work. Do you think any of those buffoons watch our videos? God, I hope so. So they hear that. Hmm. Good. Well, yeah. if 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 uh, the view count goes down between episode two and three, then I'll uh, have some theories as as to why that was. Yeah, well, that's fine. You know, uh, ever, I'm sure Everlast will be quite quite pleased if if our view counts go down. Um, well, Jimmy Everlast. Point, though, you know, and you said it before. I mean, like sometimes Asian jobs need to be optimized. Sometimes they shouldn't mm-hmm. exist. Yeah. Sometimes they're not needed, and right. you know, like, well, the um, you know, like before, you, if you if you have a problem, before you optimize, um, figuring out like what actually needs to be there mm-hmm. is definitely a good exercise. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, my limited experience, you know, oh, you someone who they have a job that has like temp in the name was created months ago. You still need it. Mm-hmm. You have a job that's aired out every day for the past year. Should not be airing out. You have a job that oh, was... Especially what is DBCC check DB? <laughs> like, <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> you have a job that was mysteriously disabled months ago. Yep. Should be disabled. Yep. Should be enabled. Yeah. Um, especially when it's DBCC so check DB. I've, I mean, who needs that, right? Um, <laughs> I'm a big fan of, I don't know, either source control or some source of truth where you know what Asian jobs you should have. Because I have gone through the exercise of, you know, yeah. hey, look at all these great Asian jobs that are airing out and are disabled and whatever else. Do we need that? Mm. Um, I'm guilty of this too, but you know, when you create Asian jobs, there's that little, like, that little box where you can, like, put notes or, like, I think they call it a description. Yeah, yeah. You ever see that filled out? Uh, I, I do when I create them. Oh, wow. Well, yeah. All right. Yeah. Look well, at you, I, the, 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 the model SQL Server user. Well, I mean, let, let's, let's, let's be real here. Uh, the, I, I don't, actually don't, I don't recall exactly how many agent jobs I distribute in my GitHub repo, but I, I, make, I make darn sure everyone knows that that agent job came from Darling Data in the description so that when they open it oh. up, they go, ah. I see. Okay, that's where okay. that came from. Do a little, uh, do a little self promotion for the zero percent of people who open agent jobs and pay any attention to what the description is. I I do think though, if you are creating a temporary job, you know you, you've got to, you know, your future self will thank you if you like write even like one sentence or maybe even a couple of words in that description yeah. saying like what this thing has. Well, I mean, I, yeah. I think it would be very helpful if agent jobs had like a very easy expiration date to apply to them. 
Like this job will self destruct in three yeah. months when oh well, well, we use the word easy. I, I think easy is the keyword. Oh there. yeah, easy right. is definitely the keyword there. There's definitely yeah. hard ways to do that. It's not a, not a lot of easy ways to do that. I th- I think I man I I have that uh, I have that Asian job open source thing I did I, yeah I, I don't think I have anything written to the to the description of the notes oh well, you mm. go you are you are guilty of your own crimes Joe it's true mm. it's crazy maybe I should go back crazy to think about <laughs> maybe I should sell that as as advertising space you know there you go yeah just put like Everlast in there and see. See, see how fast, see how, see how well that goes. Oh. Joe's everlasting agent jobs. No explanation. I mean, a, lot, a lot of agent jobs are, are, are everlasting. You know, they get created, no one knows why they're there, and they never get deleted. It's true, yeah. They just run Sad. forever and ever. They air out forever and ever. Um, <laughs> Speaking so... of agent job errors, one of, one of my least favorite facets of SQL Server Agent is that it does not run with ANSI set options that match what you get from SQL Server Management Studio if you just crack a query editor window open. And that has led to a, a lot of grief from people who uh, try to use things like you know filtered indexes or uh, computed columns or index views because all of a sudden agent jobs start failing with these mysterious errors that did not fail when you, when you tested your code carefully in a SQL Server Management Studio tab. And I think... That's interesting. What? I I actually didn't know that. Yeah, Um, Yeah, it's crazy. Can you create a server procedure that forces the right options? Well, I mean, you you just have to put the right ANSI set options in, like, the job step or whatever. Like, if it's calling the store procedure, you can put it in the store procedure. If you're just calling, like, code in a job step, yeah, you can put the set options in the like pre code run, but yeah, yeah that's but really I, don't, I don't want to do that. Well no. It's, it's not, no, it's, I don't no, want to it's do not, that. Not fun and sexy to mess with no. ANSI set options. So it should just be right. Uh I guess along the that topic, how do you feel about, you know, Asian jobs with with a ton of T C goal just in that little unwieldy box? Um, dim. Very dim. Dim. Very yeah, dim. Yeah, I'm with you on that yeah. one. Um, I mean, I'm sure in some cases you you I can't use a procedure because you're dealing like a, illegal things, but <laughs> if if it can all be helped, you know, I'd much rather see an agent job calling a procedure and that procedure has whatever you need. That way you yeah. have an agent job, you set totally. a procedure. Totally. You don't have to mess around with that stupid box. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's just, you know. Yeah. Um that box is a perilous place. Um, the, the number of times when, like, I, I've tried, like, or, like I've highlighted everything and like tried to do something, uh, and then like accidentally hit the space bar and had it all disappear on me. It's probably more often than I'd like to admit. But like, you know, trying to like edit code in there is not fun. Uh, yeah, I, I, I really, I really dislike that. Not fun. I mean, it's, it's just not. It's not highlighted. It's not formatted. There's no, yeah, no nothing I, friendly I about think, it. Yeah, I don't think that there's a way to, to, to parse it, right? No, no. Yeah, there's just. It's just a blob. It's like dynamic yeah. SQL in a, in a, in a box. <laughs> it's very annoying. I've, I've seen people put dynamic, dynamic SQL in the box. Yeah, same. And seen. most of the time, it uh doesn't work yeah i like i like when I, I open that up and there's like five or six cursors declared at the very beginning and you're just like oh where's this going <laughs> you're like i'm not following this here it's, it's, it's a billing hours opportunity huh <sighs> yeah no, nothing says billable hours like editing cursor code in an ssms prompt it's really really yeah. valuable to, to people out there in the world wow if only someone would charge us an exorbitant amount of money to, to edit this code. I mean, don't you mean a very reasonable um, industry competitive amount of money? Yeah, but you know, to, to, to a lot of people th- those words don't resonate. Uh, to a lot of people they're like, I just want the most expensive thing. So I'm, I'm trying to position myself as the most expensive thing and worth it. Like worth every penny. Like a Rolls Royce, Bentley or I, yeah, I I better be more careful with the billable hours I have left. Huh? 
uh, I don't think you have any left. That, that's not true. It is now. Don't you really recording this podcast goes towards your billable hours. This is when you think of doing I this for think free. You want to make a video of yourself like shaking down your uh, customers, right? I mean, like, it's not. Uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, man. I mean, I, I, I'm not a business guy, but if you, if you care for my advice, it would be, uh, you know, do it in private when, when the camera's not rolling. Uh, well, you know, uh, no one ever said it was a good businessman. Never been accused of that. You know what? Another thing that really rankles me about agent jobs is uh, way back when. Forget how I forget how how far in the way back machine this is, but uh, I got this great idea that I would chain agent jobs together by having job steps that called uh, like whatever whatever the execute job store procedure is, and my my thinking was. It's going to call a different agent job. That different agent job is going to have its own like erroring, alerting, uh, and whatever other stuff going on. And then I don't have to worry about having like 50 job steps that are like, if this doesn't finish, uh, throw an error and maybe do this other thing. And uh, it didn't work as procedurally as I expected it to. Uh, apparently, a job step just saying execute this job step is enough. And so what would, what happened is I ended up running DBCC check DB on like 20 databases simultaneously rather than a single database at a time. And, uh, that was, that was a less than enjoyable, um, less than enjoyable time for me. Uh, I didn't expect that. And when I saw it in action, I was like, wow, that, like, I mean, that's maybe a cool way to call like asynchronous code, like, and just have like parallelize some process, but, um, yeah. Uh, Bunch of egg on my face for that one. So you had a agent job step that was just calling the procedure to execute or to let like start another. Mm -hmm. Was was it a job or or a step? Uh, there, so there was the overall agent job, and uh, each agent job, well, the the main agent job had like a bunch, had like I don't know, like ten steps in it. And each one of those steps was to call, uh, like whatever SP start job. And like, rather than waiting for the yeah. job to like start and finish, it just went, right. well, I made that call. It's off doing something onto the next one. And so, yeah, I ended up, Which, like, you know, I ended up I parallelizing mean, you know, check DB. Yeah, <laughs> I, mean, like, oh. like, I mean, to be fair, like, I think that's, that, that's the best way for it to work. Um, Unless you're counting on it to, to, to be synchronous, but well, I, I was yeah. I was counting on it to be like execute yeah, no, this yeah. job step, the job step right. completes, the next job step starts, yeah. calls the other job, the next job step starts. But no, it just went all of you at once, and I was like, ah, I am just going to wait this if, out. If you know the various, you know, it, it, it's hard to know what Microsoft envisioned with the Asian jobs. Maybe it, maybe it's just the Wild West support anything, but you know, because I have that. That open source thing, mm -hmm. which the thing I implemented was comps for maintenance. Yeah. And, you know, like I'm definitely letting them run many parallel jobs if they want. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I'm curious if, you know, if that's an abuse of the framework or if well, Microsoft in, in, uh, envisioned us uh, doing it that way. You know, I think when it, when it comes to agent jobs, like there's, like like there's there's even the concept of like an agent job server where you can like have a bunch of centralized agent jobs and have them connect to other servers to do stuff so i really do th I, I really do think that agent was designed for like a lot of flexibility and like a lot of like who knows what crazy stuff anyone is going to do with any of this and it was in like i've i've never seen release notes where like there was an improvement or some reining in of what agent does and can do because i think that was that was like pandora's box and once they once they let that out as it is there was no way to bring it back there was no way to like add any sanity to sql server agent it was just kind of like well it is what it is now and just hope like hopefully people will be responsible with it 
everyone heard Eric, you know, feel free to go wild with your Asian jobs. Go crazy. You're, you're not going to get rain done. Yeah, and then, and then come pay my either reasonable industry competitive rates or my super exorbitant rates, depending on which which you prefer. However you however you want, mentally want to classify my rates so that you can uh, so that you want to pay that invoice, that's fine with me. But if you are looking to do crazy stuff, you know you you want a lot of parallelism, yeah. As opposed to Eric, you didn't want parallelism. Um, I think my code's still on GitHub, and it works. Why wouldn't it still be um, on GitHub? I don't know. Maybe I got deleted. I mean, I haven't I haven't checked on it. It's not like people ask questions or anything. Mm. Um, well, you also didn't really do a great job of marketing it. Wow. Okay. You didn't. I mean. You know, it's it's not enough to it's just. It's not like Asian job is just some sexy thing you can market. Well, but what? It, but sure, you're right. But what you were offering, which was the column store maintenance thing, is something that people fail miserably at. Don't have a lot of good all. Not a lot of good alternatives. Like all the scripts don't handle column store very fluently. Uh, that tiger toolbox thing. I don't. I don't. I don't. Even, I don't remember. I remember you talking about it at some point, and you said it was okay, but not fantastic you know nico had all those scripts in his sisal library but he started working for microsoft and those died you know so those are in a little those are in a little shoebox coffin buried in the backyard and so like you had this all you had all this stuff that was really smart and they would re do really good maintenance on column store but then no one knew about it because you like you link in the description I'm sure I absolutely do that. But, you know, if you if you want to call attention to something, you can't just, you know, it's not just a matter of putting it on the Internet. People have to be able to find it and get to it, know it exists and know it solves, know what problem it solves. Yeah. 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 So I, that's why I talk about all my stupid scripts constantly. I want, I want people to, to get them and use them. And... You're not going to put MTB in the video name, are you? No, the video name is called SQL Server Agent Jobs. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, what else would I call it? Hashtag uh, TempTB. Do we do we do you want to talk about anything related to TempTB in this one? No, way? I was just referring to your 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 blog post that had like a million hashtags at the bottom. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Uh, it's, it's a story for another day. Maybe you should tell when the cameras on. Oh, well, it doesn't really yeah, matter much I mean, anymore. I do know that there are people out there who use the Comster maintenance thing, mm -hmm. which is, you know, a professionally satisfying thing to know. Yeah. I have no idea how many people there are. It, you know, it could be, yeah, I just have no idea. Well, you can look at your um, GitHub repo and you can see what, like, the uh, the download stats and stuff are. Oh wait, wait! They have download stats. I thought there's. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, the, that you was, can see. I thought, you, was, I thought it was just like the fork count. No, you can you can see like forks and stars at the top, and you can if you go into like uh, some special like like admin view, you can see how much traffic your repo gets, and I believe there's also a, a download download count on there as oh, well. Oh man, I, uh, I I wonder if I'd feel better or worse after checking that. You know. Uh, I don't know. It, it, it could go either way, right? I it's I, I a would big number. Just, you feel good. Just walk in a... with low expectations. Don't expect. Don't expect anything. You know, like these conversations. Don't expect anything. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> don't expect to learn anything or walk away with anything useful. We're we're just like, here having fun. Yeah, exactly. And and punching things apparently. Do I, should I get some sports equipment in my background? Uh, I thought you're you're never willing to show your background. Oh well, I mean, my background is a is a green screen for other recording purposes. But that's right. I could I could I could maybe I could draw some sports equipment on it. Draw like a weight bench and stuff. Make you know, if you want, we could like have a subscriber goal or something where if we had enough people, I could like punch the bag. You you, know, you you a lefty or a something like that? With, with, I'm a righty. A righty. All right. I want I want to see you throw <laughs> to see you throw left handed punches then. Oh, okay. I mean, you, you, you'll uh, have to subscribe to yourself then. You, 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 you can start making some, some burner accounts and, you know, get those numbers up. You know, I, I do frequently subscribe to myself, Joe. Don't know, I don't know who else would do it. 
I suspect there's not really a big appetite for, you know, like, I have some maintenance thing I, I want to run. Mm. I want to be like super parallel and efficient mm-hmm. and run, you know, between 2 a.m. and 4 a.m. Mm. And that, you know, like people just don't have those types of problems or they do, but don't know about it yeah. or they do, but don't, like there's not big enough need to solve it. Yeah. Well, you know what I mean? Like I, I, I do think you're already reaching the edge of, you know, like what DBA is, or I guess in your case, developers like mm-hmm. are even thinking about when it comes uh, to you know so solving problems. Like yes and no. Uh, I do think that there is some demand in it, d- demand for it. Uh, I, I so semi recently, I couldn't tell you exactly when, but you know, Ola did add uh, options to his scripts to uh, run uh, run run commands in parallel. Uh, I know it's available for backup. I want to say it's also available for CheckDB. I don't know if it's available for index maintenance, but you, that you can run Ola's scripts and use like the backup in parallel parameter to run multiple backups at the same time. Um, I, I think for maintenance tasks, the, the bigger rarity would be finding people who are on boxes that could accommodate that sort of maintenance in parallel, you know, especially backups would, you know, usually a single backup does enough to, you know, completely saturate that, you know, one gig iSCSI connection they have to their SAN, which is, you know, you know, in the, in the cloud, it's worse. God, God forbid. But, uh, you know, there is, so there is some demand for it. And I've, I've worked on at least a couple processes uh, where uh, the, the implementation, they wanted it to run in parallel. Uh, one of them was a dev refresh thing where I had to basically write, like I used to use, use a, a table that would help generate dynamic BCP commands. And that would essentially like BCP out from a list of tables. And that was designed to run in parallel. And uh, then like there was an import side that was also designed to run in parallel so that they could refresh like um, a smaller subset of prod data to dev servers. And then there was another one that was a schema migration thing where they were moving from one big, long, flat table to like six or seven smaller, narrower tables. And that was also designed to run run in parallel. So, you know, there's there's definitely a need for it in some circumstances. And I think there's definitely a general desire for that sort of thing. But, you know, um, really, I think I think the, the limit you hit is is definitely server hardware and resources before uh you know like the capabilities of of you know server being like you know there's a difference between like being able to do it and being able to do it well uh one of them so one of them was uh one of them was multi-threaded via powershell i remember that and the other one was multi multi-threaded via just setting up setting up a bunch of agent jobs to, to run the task. So no, this was, this was before any such framework existed. Yeah, this was, uh, this was very early in 2020. Not, not early in 2020. I'll tell you that much. If only I'd been a, a few months sooner, you know, yeah, well, you know, day late, dollar short, one parallel task shy of success. It's all, it's all a crying right. shame. You know, it's not paralyzable that I uh, really like to be. What's that? All right, I suppose this is more of a conceptual thing. Mm-hmm. Um, doing a reinitialization of replication. Oh God! At, at, at least I think it can be paralyzed. I've, I've looked, I've tried. I think I found like, you know, because the thing about replication is you go search for it and it's like some guy I was talking about like, you know, for like 15 years ago, mm-hmm. right? Like there's, there's never anything like new or current or no like that. Um, uh, replication is lar- largely fallen by the wayside, I think. Um, I, I see fewer and fewer people actually using it or interested in it or wanting to know more about it. Then there are those of us who, who are stuck uh, with it, you know, forever. Who, who inherited it. Yeah. And, uh, well, there was some like weird replacement Microsoft did that sounded really terrible. I don't remember what it's called, but 
So maybe we can, you know, one day just read the documentation, like make fun of how bad it is. Um, but yeah, well, the, the, that, that's a great way to make listener count go down. Is talk about this feature no one remembers the name of. It may be replaced replication. That's it can be cathartic to hear experienced database professionals make fun of the uh, software. Well, is it is it at, at, at least it is for me? Is it is would it be fair to make fun of it without trying it? Yeah. Okay. I mean, what I mean, like, surely you can make fun of big data collections without, without trying it. Well, they died, so I mean, yeah, yeah, like it died so fast. Yeah. I mean, think about how much material has to be there. You know, it made it, couldn't even make it to the next release. Well, I mean, I, I know that there were a few books about it, and you know, there were a lot of people yes. who told you if you didn't get on board with big data clusters, you were you might as well just dig your own grave. I don't know if that I don't know if that quite panned out. Uh, you know, uh, maybe, but then the hype cycle, the hype cycle moved to Synapse, and now the hype cycle is on Fabric, and so uh, we'll just have to wait and see what the next hype cycle is, so we can make fun of the Synapse and Fabric, right? You can't make fun of the current hype cycle. I feel like Microsoft has a community obligation to buy up all the books that those poor people wrote yeah. about features that they like immediately kill off. Yeah. You know, because cause it's got to feel so horrible to write a book about something and then Microsoft just, you know, kills it. Yeah, I mean, so there's there's two ways two ways that Microsoft kills features, right? They either, like, like outright kill them, like they did with big data clusters, or they kill them with negligence. So, you know, stuff like, you know, eight, like, like I don't know, what's, what's, a, what's one that they, that's been neglected for a long time? Like, uh, let's say service broker. I know that there was a there was a lot of information uh, for for a minute, and a lot of people who were like, "Yeah, service broker, this is going to like revolutionize the modern DBA for the next ten years." And then everyone was just like, "I have to send XML messages," but no, I'm not doing that. It's not it's not fun. Uh, I don't know. I mean, Mike, Microsoft is like sort of silently killed, like I don't know, partitioning and indexed views because they won't put a, put an ounce of effort into them. So, you know, there's there's the there's the out, there's the outright bang death, and then there's like the like the ghosting death. Microsoft Microsoft has a bad habit of ghosting features after it goes on these hot and heavy dates with them. All right, Microsoft. Well, if you're listening, it appears that Eric is going to complain about the state <laughs> of partitioning on, on on every single one of these that we do. Damn right. So you know, if if Damn if right. you want to stop, you're going to have to do some peas with. You know, get to put a little. Yeah. Bit of, a little bit of effort done. Yeah. Like just, just just support min and max. That's all it's a good start. Support min and max and partitions. It's a great start. I think we should uh wrap back around what we're supposed to be talking oh, about. About uh, agent jobs. So yeah, okay. like you know, like let's say you have ten databases, mm -hmm. they all have the same agent job, so you're getting that uh cl that collision of cadences, yeah. so to speak, and you've got your CP spikes every fifteen minutes. Um, I don't know if this is the best way to solve it, but the way I solved it was to, you know, is there easier to do it? No, not really. Um, <laughs> like, I like how I you worked changed, that out in front of everyone. <laughs> I changed the start and end times yeah. by like a random factor. Mm -hmm. Um, so, like, it would essentially skip up to one execution yep. around midnight. Yeah. And that random factor, well, I mean, like, it actually wasn't random. It was based off, like, a checksum of the database name and the agent name. Mm -hmm. So, like, in effect, you know, like, say you have some agent jobs that run every 300 and seconds. Mm -hmm. um, for one database, they'd start running at, like, you know, at, like, one minute after midnight. Mm -hmm. For another, it would be like like one minute thirty five seconds after mm -hmm. night, and so on. Yeah. So, so so that was a way to you know to shift all those previously concurring agent jobs. Yep. And now they're just running throughout the day. Yeah. Um, I admit it was a bit distasteful to like you know to, to like lose an execution possibly. Mm -hmm. Um, I justified it by the well because I mean, you know like, agent jobs can always fail. Sure. Right. Or like Asian gets turned off, or the server goes down. Yeah. Like there isn't really 
a universe where you can say, okay, I'm going to run this every five minutes and it's going to check the last five minutes of this queue table that I'm looking at. Yep. Like that, that just isn't safe to do. Right. So assuming all our HMOs were already written correctly, which is, you know, not at all a, a bad and reasonable assumption, mm. it's perfectly fine to miss up to one around midnight. Sure. And that, that was the way that I like spread out that word. Yeah. I mean, I, I think, you know, and, the, the nice thing about agent is that, you know, there, there is some built in retry facility because if you put it on a schedule to run every X, whatever, then even if one fails, the next job will hopefully just pick up whatever didn't go right last time. Or, uh, it will, you know, just either that or like something just real screwy happened and it's just going to continue to fail until a human intervenes anyway. Right. So like for replication. Yeah. Yeah. Can we stop saying the R word on this, on this radio show? Giving me the willies. Um. Well, and, and now I know what to spend my billable hours on. <laughs> uh, you you will get very little useful content out of me if that's if that's how you choose to uh that's the path you choose to walk. But uh, anyway, uh, I I do have to to wrap things up here. I have to get my kid to a, an after school thing. So uh, why don't we why don't we summarize neatly? SQL Server agent. So. And in my case, I, I I was able to solve the production problem. Mm -hmm. You know, CPU smoothed out. There weren't any jumps. I didn't have to look at the clock and be sad because it was you know, half an hour on the mark. Mm -hmm. um, so if, if you got a lot of Asian jobs, you you might have problems where you have CPU spikes during the day because the schedule is going to overlap. Some ways to solve that are combine agent jobs together, you know, run, run them in steps. Don't run things every five minutes or every hour, you know, schedule them like a, a, a computer would. Think like a computer, run it every 31 seconds, every 61 seconds. That way you're getting that offset. Um, and if need be, if you have many databases all running the same jobs, you can even offset the start time so it's not overlapping. And, you know, like, just as a general sanity thing, have some source of truth for what agent job should be there, either source control or something else. You know, get rid of agent jobs you don't need, um, fix ones that are airing out, uh, things along those lines. Yeah. Anything you want to add? Yeah, I mean, you know, for me, the, the general caution with agent jobs is, you know, aside from uh, everything you mentioned, is that they, they don't run with the ANSI set options you might expect. Uh, and that if you attempt to chain agent jobs together, you might be in for a very parallel surprise. Uh, so th those are those are my two or my two points of wisdom about SQL Server agent. But uh, and that little uh, text box and SMS don't, yeah. don't 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 use it. Yeah, don't use that. And also write descriptions for your agent jobs so people know what the heck they're doing. Documentation is important. Uh, something like that. All right. Well, uh, thank you everyone for joining us for uh, the the second episode of of the Bit Obscene Radio Show. Uh, it's a it's a little tardier than we expected. Uh, first, Joe was sick, and then uh, my family had some sort of like hyper advanced extended plague RSV remix going around. And last week, I was a disaster area. So I'm just getting back to normal now, and uh, uh, hopefully, we will have a brand spanking new episode for you. And on, a, on a more timely cadence for your listening pre pleasure. So uh, uh, thank you for listening and or watching. Joe, would you like to say goodbye? Or is, is, is goodbye too hard for you? This is why I don't make promises about when the next uh, episode will be. Mm -hmm. So I feel very vindicated and, you know, my lack of commitment. All right. Well, your lack of commitment is obvious. Thank you, Joe. <laughs>